Hi everyone, today I want to cover calculating and imaging transit using SkyTrack. I've actually never done a uh, solar transit and so I actually did that yesterday and so I want to uh, review what I did and show you the results of what I got. Uh, again, a transit is um, satellite, uh, the path of the satellite transiting across a solar object such as the sun, the moon, or in the case of SkyTrack, you can also calculate it for the planets. Uh, I'm going to do the sun, as I've, I've never actually done one before. And uh, first thing is you want to check the include near transits, because if I don't check that, it's only going to list uh, an actual transit from your specific site. But what we're really trying to do here is find a, um, a site to, to travel to, to get uh, a very good transit. So I've actually got my computer back to yesterday, just sort of show you what I did yesterday. So this here was the, the transit i um, interested in. So from my home site where my observatory is, the angular separation would be over five degrees. So it's, it's a near transit, but it's not a transit. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on uh, this button here which will calculate the line of transit and then lay it against a map. There's two ways to do this. Um, the preferred way is to download and install Google Earth Desktop, which I have. It's a free application. If you unclick this, then instead of uh, interfacing with uh, the desktop application, it'll create a file called a, a KML file which will have information in it and then you could go to Google Earth Web uh, load that file and you could see your transit line on the map uh, I'll show you in a second um, another reason why I prefer the uh, the local install so I'm clicking on my transit here by the way it's um, I chose this one because it was a nice uh, high transit um, the other thing to remember the, the higher the elevation the quicker the transit's going to uh, B. So we know our, our sun is 15 arc minutes radius, so uh, a little more close to 32 arc minutes in diameter. And we can see here that at this elevation, the angular velocity of the satellite, and in this case ISS, um, is going to be um, 30 arc minutes in a second. So if we have a perfect transit going through the middle, the total transit time is going to be um, approximately a second long, so it's, it's going to be pretty quick. Um, so we're selecting uh, this transit, and I'm going to now uh, calculate that data, and then it's going to import that to Google Earth. And we can see uh, a red line drawn across the map here. So any position on this red line is going to give us uh, a perfect transit uh, through the middle of the sun's disk. So I live up around here, and so a convenient place for me to travel would be down this highway here. So I'm interested probably in this area here, and that's in fact where I went. Uh, I chose this highway here. I, I knew that's not a very busy road. It's also uh, a paved road. Uh, not all our side roads in our area are paved, some are gravel. And I don't want a truck or car going by and tossing up gravel at my setup. So this looked like a good spot here. Uh, so the sun is down in this direction in the southeast and it looks like there's no trees or um, electrical lines or anything that's going to interfere. Like for instance if we went over here and try to do it here, these trees might interfere with my field of view. So that's the kind of thing you would look for. And then if you if you really want to double check, you can click on this little guy here, drop him on, and this will give us uh, the street view. So now I can see, yeah, for sure, there's, there's going to be nothing obstructing my view. Uh, so it looks like a good location to go to. Now the reason I prefer the desktop version, the web version for some reason when you go to Street View won't show my transit line. 
um, so I don't know exactly where it would be. So that's why I like uh, desktop, the local install. So when I move the the cursor, which is a little hand right now around, you can see that the um, latitude and longitude change. And so when I put it right on the line there, I could record that latitude and longitude. And that would be the exact location I'd want to go. You can see it also shows the elevation. Um, elevation isn't real critical for uh, a lunar or solar transit. Um, but if you're trying to capture a transit with a planet, you need to be as accurate as, as possible. So you want to make sure that uh, you'd want to recalculate with that exact elevation um, to get uh, as precise as you can. So what I'm going to do, and this, this step isn't necessary, we could just record now um, that latitude and longitude, go to the site, and uh, and do it but if you want to verify it you can use one of these little placement markers so I'm going to put right the shoulder here between the crosshairs and say OK and then I'm going to right click that save place as and the format has to be KML I'm just going to save that to the desktop then we can close Google Earth. So back in SkyTrack, what I've done now is created a new site called Transit. And I can use this function, import latitude longitude from a KML file. So this is a KML file we saved out of Google Earth. And it's going to import the latitude and longitude, the exact latitude and longitude. Uh, unfortunately, it it doesn't import the ele elevation so I recall that it was 303 so I'm just gonna put that in and save that and now that we have a new site what we can do is go back to uh, transit calculations and now we're gonna choose the site uh, transit and we're gonna recalculate just just as a double check and you can see there's our transit and now it's a, a perfect transit. So we can see that the um, RA and declination of the sun here are matching that of the satellite. It's actually showing here one second separation. That's just a rounding off thing. And anyway, one, one arc second is uh, like a pixel on my camera. So that's, that's not significant. The next thing I did was use this little feature down here, which is just to create a calendar event for the transit. So I'm going to save that. And then that uh, that's going to go into my calendar. So it has my latitude and longitude where I have to go and uh, the exact transit time. And once I save that, that'll actually uh, sync up with my iPhone. Uh, so I took that latitude and uh, longitude plugged it into my car GPS and drove to the site so this is um, exactly where we're looking on Google Earth there and uh, I just used my GPS on my phone to try to hone it in as accurately as I could got the telescope set up got my solar filter on got tracking on the Sun um, I was a little worried about actually missing the time so I actually wrote the time down on a piece of paper and sort of always kept that in front of me as uh, as I was fiddling with everything. One thing I did have trouble with, and you'll see in the video, my, my focus was a little off. Um, I've never actually used my telescope remotely before. I've only used it in uh, my backyard observatory. And I have attached onto it a motorized focuser um, that works through ASCOM that I use when I do deep sky imaging. And I didn't want to swap that out again. So I didn't have the fine focus knob on the refractor. I just had the coarse focus. So I had a little trouble getting focus. Um, there were a couple of sunspots uh, visible. So I used those to try to focus as best I could. Um, the other thing, um, I wanted to actually see it come through the viewfinder. And so um, my wife was along with me. So she was. Um, reading off the seconds off of her phone so I knew exactly when I should see it. Um, 
I actually missed it. I didn't I didn't see it live time, um, but I played it back right away on my on my camera. I was using a DS, DSLR uh, shooting video, and sure enough, there it was. So it was it was pretty exciting, and it was kind of exciting as you're counting down um, to see if this was actually going to work or not. Um, so next we'll we'll take a look at the actual video footage. So here's the actual video I took and I just have it on uh, loop here. So you can see ISS coming from about here. And there it goes across. These are the two sunspots I was trying to focus on. Uh, one mistake I did make, I think I um, uh, my exposure is a little too bright. Uh, and again, that's, that's sort of going to be trial and error. And this, this was the first time I I attempted it um, but there it was pretty good um, the one thing you'll notice is it is not a perfect transit so the center is about there and I, I just so missed that so I wasn't sure if either my my calculation wasn't quite correct or the the other thing and I forgot to mention this at the beginning is you really need an up-to-date TLE file and uh, so what I did after um, I took the image, I went back home, uploaded uh, a fresh TLE file, and uh, we'll take a look at that. So as I was mentioning, uh, right before you travel to your, to your site, you should download again a new TLE file to get the most up-to-date orbital elements uh, for ISS or, or whatever you're, you're looking for the transit for to make sure it's as uh, up to date and as accurate as possible. So I did I did notice my transit wasn't perfect. I thought I was pretty good on getting my exact site. So when I came home, uh, I uploaded a, the new TLE file. There was an updated one. Um, and uh, this is what I found. So when I recalculate it for the exact same site, you can see now the angular separation is actually two arc minutes. And when we look at this little graphic here, that's pretty well exactly what we observe. So, so it looks like the calculation is working good and is, is um, pretty accurate. Um, but the limiting factor is going to be that how fresh those orbital, orbital elements are in that TLE file. So it's a good idea to, to re-double check that as, as um, close as you can to actually traveling to your site where you're going to image. Again, for the, the sun and uh, the moon, not so critical. But if you want to try to capture a, a transit with a planet, which uh, I hope to try at some point, um, accuracy is going to be everything. Um, I also talked about elevation. Well, you can see the elevation on Google Earth where you are. And it's a good idea to plug that in here so that it uses, uh, normally it'll use your elevation from your site, but if you put in a, a different value here, it'll use this elevation when it draws this transit line and, uh, and calculates this data here. And uh, again, probably more important for planets, unless, unless the elevation is way different, you know, unless you're like, uh, 50 meters or something different from your calculation, then you might want to do it for sun and moon as well. Anyway, um, like I said, that's that's the first time I've tried a, a solar uh, uh, transit. Uh, first time I've actually tried my, my solar filter on my refractor and I um, have a little bit more work to do. Uh, I wanted to capture video because I wanted to see the motion. Um, but if you're looking for single frames um, on a DSLR, video might not be the best uh, choice. I think a lot of people use like a, a burst frame mode. It's, it's just taking um, single images, but at a very fast rate. And I might try that as well too, because I think, I think you get a, a crisper uh, image. And uh, I need to practice focusing with that solar filter. But uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun, and uh, I hope you have a lot of fun too trying out uh, the transit feature. Thanks for now.